After the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but before the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, there was another team of multi-adjective superheroes protecting the world from the forces of evil. Take some Gundam, some Garfield, put it in a Deadpool shaker, and mix until combined. They went around the world and back on a trip that was peppered with controversies big and small. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the history of Samurai Pizza Cats. Thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Use code TOYGALAXY to get 83% off plus three extra months for free. Surfshark is a virtual private network available as an easy to use app and browser extension that basically lets you place your laptop or phone anywhere in the world, allowing you to access the internet as if you were in another country, accessing and unblocking websites and content that you may not usually be able to see. On top of that, Surfshark also encrypts your data to add an extra layer of security when you're online to keep all of your personal information safe and your browsing activity hidden. No one needs to know which pre-orders you're placing and from which sites. That's between you and your 27 Optimus Primes. Is there a Japanese TV series about monster fighting ninjas wearing multicolored superhero costumes you've been trying to watch since you were a kid, but it's not allowed in the US because the rights are owned by another company that changed the names, actors, and plots so you hardly even recognize it anymore? With Surfshark, you can make it look like your computer is in another country by changing your location. Beyond that, your Surfshark account is yours to take wherever you decide to go, any device, anywhere, as many devices as you want to log in on. Access the content you've already paid for and watch it when and where it's convenient for you. Use code TOYGALAXY to get 83% off plus three extra months for free. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out for yourself. Click the link in the description below to get started today. That's code TOYGALAXY for 83% off and three extra months. Thanks again to Surfshark. Samurai Pizza Cats is a 52-episode animated series produced by Saban Entertainment that originally aired in North America and Canada in 1993. However, when it premiered in the U.S. in 1996, only 40 episodes remained. What happened to the other 12 episodes? In a word, controversy. controversy. Samurai Pizza Cats takes place in a fictional city called Little Tokyo. It appears to be a modern Japanese city, heavily influenced by feudal architecture, fashion, and customs, populated by sentient anthropomorphic animal robots, or animal automatons, or animal androids. There are modern conveniences like high-definition televisions, computers, and of course, pizza ovens, futuristic elements like giant robots and transforming battle armor, but the government is based on the imperial heritage of Japan, there are no cars or airplanes, and the people depend on samurai for protection. Those samurai are three cybercats wearing adorable battle armor who've been chosen to act as the city's guardians. Speedy Cerviche leads and wields the powerful Ginzu sword. Guido Anchovy, cool but rude, wields the samurai sunspot umbrella. And Polyester, the fiery spirit who wields a magic flute, heart-shaped daggers, and razor-sharp claws. The samurai cats maintain dual lives, protecting the city and posing as employees of a pizza parlor, making food, serving customers, and delivering orders. They are assisted by Francine, who acts as both dispatcher for the samurai pizza cats and owner slash manager of the pizza parlor. Her most important job after counting the registers at the end of the day is operating the giant gun mounted to the top of the pizza parlor that launches the cats into battle. Little Tokyo is under attack from inside the government. Emperor Fred is well past the age at which he can reasonably manage his duties. That responsibility falls to his daughter, Princess Violet, and the city council led by a rat named Prime Minister Seymour the Big Cheese. But the council has its protectors as well. Palace Guard Commander Big Al Dente knows he can't make any movements in the open. Accusing the Prime Minister of treason without proof could land him in prison or worse, executed. So it is he that secretly recruits and commands the Samurai Pizza Cats, giving them their missions, trying desperately to thwart the Prime Minister's evil schemes. Samurai Pizza Cats, like many shows before, it is an English dubbed adaptation of a previously existing series from Japan. While the choice between subtitling a series and overdubbing is itself controversial every single time it happens regardless of the production company, Saban Entertainment went a step further by completely disregarding the scripts that had been written for the original show. 54 episodes of Kyakuto Ninden Teyendi or Cat Ninja Legend Teyendi 
were released in Japan from February of 1990 to February of 1991. Produced by Tatsunoko Productions and Sotsu Agency, those companies were responsible for shows like Mach Go Go Go, which would become Speed Racer in the 1960s, Science Ninja Team Gotcha Man, which would become Battle of the Planets in the 1970s, and Mobile Suit Gundam, which would become five decades of various Gundam series. Kyato Ninden TND was an action comedy series that leaned heavily into parody and self-awareness. Parody of Japanese comics, Japanese animation, TV, movies, customs, and life in general. Self-awareness like Deadpool in that the characters know they are in a cartoon. They can address the camera directly. The plot is nearly identical to Samurai Pizza Cats in that the anthropomorphic animal androids, or animaloids, live in a modern city inspired by feudal Japan called Idoropolis. Shogun Lele Tokugawa is past the age at which he can manage his duties, so his daughter Tokugawa Usako and the council led by Prime Minister Kitsune Zuka Kun no Kami handle the responsibilities of governing. The Prime Minister, a fox, very obviously a fox and not a rat, has an assistant called Karasu Genari Sai, who along with Karamaru lead an army of ninja crows in a secret plot to seize the seat of power from the Shogun. His actions are countered by those of Palace Guard Commander Inuyama Wanko no Kami, who cannot take direct public action himself, and therefore employs the three cat ninjas who work at the local pizzeria to conduct missions in defense of the city and its legitimate leadership. When a production company chooses to subtitle a series, they prioritize the sound of the original work, the original performances of the voice actors, Japanese actors speaking Japanese. However, it causes the viewer to take their eyes off the visuals while they hurriedly try to keep up with the narrative by reading. Overdubbing allows the viewer to keep their eyes on the action and understand the dialogue for a more natural viewing experience. However, the choices made by casting directors and the new voice actors unavoidably alter the authenticity of the creator's vision for how the finished work should be presented. Legend has it that when Saban Entertainment licensed the rights to Kyato Ninden TND the year after it aired, many of the materials used in production were already damaged or disposed of. The show wasn't that successful, no one kept anything. There were not enough complete scripts to send over with the animation for Saban Entertainment to facilitate a proper translation. Another legend has it that there were scripts, but they were so poorly translated that they were of no value to the Saban team. But the more plausible reality is that while Saban Entertainment did disregard the original scripts, regardless of quality or completeness, it was to maintain the original intent of the series. As a parody series whose plot and dialogue were built around Japanese pop culture references, jokes you would only get if you thoroughly understood the nuances of Japanese culture and pop culture, it was impossible to translate to another region and maintain the humor. It is likely that Tatsunoko and Sotsu gave their blessing to Saban to do whatever they needed to do to make the show relevant to an English-speaking audience. Saban Entertainment set about creating an entirely new show, new characters, jokes, and cultural references by having writers watch the animation and write whatever they could to fit the animation and, hopefully, make it funny. The result was a show that looked like Ronin Warriors with the frenetic pacing and rapid-fire humor of Animaniacs with a Power Rangers-style team and existed before all of them. It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Saban Samurai Meatloaf Cats! Next, it's a bird! It's a plane! It's Saban Samurai Broccoli Cats! Yeah, right. It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Saban Samurai Pizza Cats! pizza -rific. You know, I just love it when he says that. It's just not the same without the pizza. Samurai Pizza Cats, we deliver... On WB20, WXOA, Detroit. In 1987, years before Power Rangers, a gag dub of the Super Sentai series, Kagaku Sentai Dynaman, aired on the USA Network and Nickelodeon. Six episodes are overdubbed with dialogue that has absolutely nothing to do with the original script and is played for laughs many times at the expense of Japanese culture and racial stereotypes. Controversial to the fans that want to experience the original work, unaltered, but mostly it's just nonsense. Samurai Pizza Cats is not that. It is a gag dub in principle, but not in execution. Of the 54 episodes produced for Kyato Ninden TND, only 52 were part of the original Saban adaptation. The two shows that were omitted were clip shows, or episodes that just recapped events that had already occurred during the season, letting viewers catch up on things they missed. However, only 50 episodes aired in 1993 when Samurai Pizza Cats was shown on YTV in Canada. What happened to the other two episodes? No one knows for sure, but the likely story is that they were not included in the tapes that were sent to the network. Suspicious 
but not controversial. Three years later, Samurai Pizza Cats aired in the US, but this time only 40 episodes made the cut. This time there was nothing suspicious about it. Those episodes were intentionally cut by network censors for reasons ranging from the relatively benign to the obscene. One episode relies heavily on an understanding of Buddhism and Japanese fairy tales that might not have been clear even in an English translation. One episode has a giant robot monster shaped like Lone Wolf and Cub which wouldn't have resonated with the audience the show was intended for. Several episodes have references to prominent licensed characters like Bugs Bunny or Garfield that might have been too on the nose making the lawyers nervous about potential action from their owners. Another depicts several culturally offensive racial stereotypes. One episode called Gender Bender Butterflies revolves around a swarm of mechanical butterflies that cause everyone to act opposite their sexual identity. Some of the banned episodes depict sexual assault, bondage, a character named Bullshot, and some were just plain confusing as a result of the production process. US television standards and practices have been censoring kids' television for a long time. He-Man notoriously never punched, kicked, or hit anyone with his sword in Masters of the Universe because that kind of violence wasn't allowed on that kind of show for that kind of audience. Banning an episode is controversial, but it's also common practice when that content is aimed at kids. If you heard the Samurai Pizza Cats theme once, you've heard it a million times thereafter. While you eat, while you sleep, while you listen to other music, it's just there always in the background. It's catchy and digs its way into your brain, and that's just one more example of the creative powers of Shuki Levy and Saban, who handled the new music for the series. The theme was performed by Michael Arrington, a writer on the series credited as Googie Gomez. Michael is said to have been tipsy during the performance and can be heard to stutter on the word down, but it was left in because it worked for the thing that they were making. If you're looking for toys of Samurai Pizza Cats, you'll have to direct your attention to the original Kyoto Ninden series. Bandai produced several model kits, vinyl figures, and accessories in Japan in 1990, but very little, if any, of that made its way to North America officially. The cats can be found in both their regular and super armored versions. You can get robots like Pizza Cat's own mech Nyago King. There were small non-posable rubber gashapon or quarter machine style pieces which had playsets like the pizza parlor itself. Japan saw releases of Kato Ninden comics as a tie-in and manga by Yoshimi Hamada. The stories were published in Comic Bonbon bon, along with the series airing in Japan in 1990. There was also a sequel set after the end of the series published in 1994 by Tatsuya Soma. The US would get a more limited release. The Pizza Cats appeared in backup stories in issues of Saban's Powerhouse, which was a magazine-style collection of comics published by Valiant, mostly centered around the Power Rangers. Saban's Powerhouse lasted for three months in 1997. The Pizza Cat stories were written by Clay and Susan Griffith and Robert L. Washington. Art was produced by Rusty Holler, Steve George, Phyllis Novin, and Ken Bell. None of the stories are any more or less substantial than the episodes themselves, but they are original creations by Western writers and artists. Like the comics, any games were based on the original Japanese series and were not officially released in the US. In 1991, Tecmo released a game for the Nintendo Famicom. Or if you're smarter than me, you can get a fan-made ROM patch with a full English translation version for, what, like your computer or something? Yeah? I'm told it substitutes Samurai Pizza Cat's names and locations for those of Kyoto Ninden. For Saban Entertainment, Samurai Pizza Cats was a relatively low-risk investment that was ultimately a foot in the door for animation and a fundraiser for future projects. It wasn't a market saturation approach like other projects that Saban had worked on previously and would work on in the future. Shirts, hats, party supplies, Halloween costumes, all the normal stuff that cartoons would have been supported by weren't part of the marketing for Samurai Pizza Cats. And whatever exists is usually just an adaptation of the original source material, like the official fan book. It has been translated into English, but it's about Kyoto Ninden Teyendi, not the Samurai Pizza Cats adaptation. It would be a while before Samurai Pizza Cats would be released on home media because its destiny was tied to that of Saban Entertainments. In 1996, the year Pizza Cats aired in the US, Saban Entertainment merged with Fox Children's Network to create a new combined entity called Fox Kids Worldwide. In 2001, that whole entity was purchased by Disney, leading to one thing, controversy. Renamed Buena Vista Studios, the rights to reproduction of Samurai Pizza Cats were buried in a mountain of other more profitable, more in-demand properties. Despite fans' desire to see a DVD or later a Blu-ray transfer, Disney sat on the property for over a decade, refusing to produce anything related to the franchise and preventing anyone else from doing so. Disney stepped in the way of the Pizza Cat's inclusion in the Tatsunoko vs. Capcom video game and prevented Tatsunoko from releasing any new merchandise related to the characters in Japan. 
Time heals all wounds and, in some cases, allows for licensing rights to expire. In 2012, the rights reverted back to Tatsunoko, who wasted no time releasing the entire series on DVD. Discotech Media licensed the series internationally and put out full DVD sets of both Samurai Pizza Cats and Kyakuto Ninden Tei in 2013, as there was market demand for both versions. The gag dub was hardly that. It was recognized in many markets as being superior to even the original series. The series was released on Blu-ray in 2015 and helped end some of the most controversial aspects of the show, that is, the removal of the episodes that had been banned in the United States. The DVD and Blu-ray releases contain all of the episodes, regardless of their controversial content. As of this video, you can stream the entire series on Tubi TV, Crunchyroll, and several episodes are available here on YouTube. But be careful which version you select. Sometimes what is referred to as Samurai Pizza Cats is actually a straight subtitled version of Kyato Ninden Teyendi. Be sure that you have what you want before you spend any money. Samurai Pizza Cats ultimately aired all over the world in markets from Australia to France to Russia. The Saban scripted English adaptation has gained a degree of popularity that exceeds the original show itself. It is the energy and exposure that Saban gave the property that has endeared it to fans over the years. For Saban Entertainment, it was a successful experiment that helped pave the way for future endeavors and similar experiments like Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, which became a billion dollar franchise and continues to drive television, action figures, games, and comics to this day. It is unlikely that the Samurai Pizza Cats will ever be back given the nature of the rights and the different characterizations from original to the popular dubbed series. But if Robotech can find a way to get back to market as both Macross and Robotech after nearly 40 years of independent region lock simultaneous existence, then there is hope for the Samurai Pizza Cats as well, and for us because the fight for truth, justice, and unlimited pepperoni never ends. We did it. We did it. We shot an episode. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who already are. If you haven't heard, we started streaming on Twitch. Find us twice a week at twitch.tv slash toygalaxy. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon or become a YouTube channel member. <laughs> please share this video and let us know in the comments down below if you've ever heard of Samurai Pizza Cats or Kyato Ninden TND, and if so, where they rank on your list of Ninja Turtle compete properties. Better than a street shark? Worse than a cowboy of Moo Mesa? Surely these cats can't lose to biker mice from Mars. Imagine the disrespect. God. Oh God, God. Christ, thank God. <laughs>